Welcome everyone, Christine here on Serious Gaming with Wargame Red Dragon. I did a series for this game when it originally came out, now I'm redoing it because I had to take the original one down as a result of the fact uh, that the, a lot of the music in this game is copyrighted. So, just turning the music off, replaying the game. Though I will not play Bear vs. Dragon or Pearl of the Orient because personally I think those campaigns are pretty bad. In fact, when it comes to Eugene System, the developers of the series, the war game series, and other titles, I think that a lot of their single-player content has been hit and miss. There's been some good ones, reasonable ones, and then ones that aren't so good. Now, in this case, there are only two campaigns that are really interesting. There it's Klein Mount Noranaya and Second Korean War. But I also played the Busan Pocket just to show people uh, the gameplay mechanics and all that to explain how it all works. This is an easy campaign, more on an introductory campaign to every. June 10th, 1987. South Korean dictator Chung Do Wan, having reached the end of his official presidential mandate and willing to step down, announces his choice for a successor. This appointment, which oversteps any electoral process, triggers the wrath of the students and the liberals, who were hoping for democratic reforms. June 10th to the 18th, 1987. In a matter of days, over a million protesters take to the streets all over the country. U.S. forces in Korea are ordered to remain on lockdown in their barracks. North Korea does not fail to notice the situation in the South. Agents infiltrate designated circles in order to increase the level of chaos, while military forces are put on alert. June 19th, 1987. While police and security forces are about to be overwhelmed, President Chun mobilizes the army in the streets. Hard-pressed and panicked by a hostile crowd, an officer orders his troops to fire. In a matter of minutes, the shooting spreads all over the streets of Seoul. June 19th to the 21st, 1987. The crackdown is brutal, resulting in over a thousand casualties and many more arrests. June 21st, 1987. With U.S. troops still confined to their barracks and the ROK army deployed in the streets, North Korean leader Kim Il-sung decides the time has come for Korea's reunification. June 22, 1987. When the North Korean artillery barrage rolls over the DMZ at dawn, U.S. and ROK units, disorganized by the civil unrest, are taken by complete surprise. June 22 to the 27th, 1987. Within a few hours, the first lines of defense are overwhelmed. Within a few days, the battered U.S. and ROK units are pushed back to a last perimeter around the vital harbor of Busan. Yes. All right. Major, I cannot get through to the general headquarters. All communication with the front are cut off. I've, I think I managed reaching an advance post of the 3rd Infantry Battalion. I'll put you through now. This is Arda Yun from the 3rd Infantry Regiment. They totally trashed us. They're coming straight at you. They're not even stopping to take prisoners. At least one armored and two infantry regiments supported by more artillery than imaginable. Our HQ has just been blown up and we only have one defense line left. Communications breakdown, Major. I'll try to get through to our other headquarters and to the US General Headquarters in the region. In the meantime, I am giving you the reports on enemy troop movements. Very well. So the front line, quote unquote, west, uh, the west of South uh, Korea. I guess that's where the re <laughs> that's the indication of where the rest of the South Korean military is. Here's the thing: in this particular time period, North and South Korea were more or less on par in terms of military uh, capabilities. I mean, military spending. South Korea was spending more, but you also have to account for the fact that for a lot of militaries, the biggest cost is personnel, so how much you pay the troops. Like, for the US military, it's about 50% of their entire military budget goes to paying the troops and benefits and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's obviously very different to consider um, uh, things like equipment and all that. Now, in this particular time period, North Korea would, and still even in the modern age, there is a legitimate fear, well-founded in reality, that if a war ever broke down, 
that North Korea would smash through South Korea's military. And the reason is the particulars of uh, military deployments on the Korean Peninsula. Obviously, South Korea cr cares a great deal about Seoul. Over half their population lives in the Seoul metropolitan area, this particular area over here. So that means that most of South Korea's military, the vast majority of South Korea's military is deployed along the border. And what's the problem with that? Well, the problem with that particular situation is that North Korea has one of the largest, if not the largest, artillery forces in the world. And they've massed all of that artillery along this border, in reality. So if a war were to ever break down, the South Korean military would be pulverized just as a result of the sheer number of artillery strikes coming their way. Seoul would be devastated, and that's not accounting for chemical, biological, and nuclear weapons that North Korea would use. So, in, at this particular point, North Korea spends about $10 billion, or equivalent to $10 billion, on defense. South Korea spends about $40 billion on defense. But beyond troop costs, costs of modern equipment, etc., North Korea, it's not so clear-cut. There are people who believe, well, North Korea, South Korea is a capable military of standing up to um, uh, to North Korea. In theory, yes. In practice, no. And that's how they view it themselves, by the way. This is not just me stating it. The South Koreans themselves are pretty concerned about the possibility of being overrun uh, by, uh, the North uh, by the North Koreans. Anyway, I am going to take this logistics convoy, I am going to take this close uh, recon well, company. What do I have deployed here? Just let me go over those deployments. So I have the heavy armored regiment, which has K-1 tanks, equivalent to our M1 Abrams. Not quite certain what kind of gun they have. I think it's uh, the 120mm. Let me just look at these statistics. You know, 105mm rounds on the K-1s. There is an upgraded version of the K-1 tank, which has 120mm uh, guns. Now... The North Koreans don't will deploy tanks to the south and uh, to the north here, but not in the central region. Anyway, I'm gonna deploy these F-86 uh, F Saber. So these were some of the first jet fighters that America used. So what do I have in this central region? I have the 25th Infantry Regiment, the 7th Engineers Battalion, the 103rd Strike Squadron, the Special Aviation Regiment, Special Forces, and the Heavy Armored Battalion. In the west, I have the 3rd Armored Battalion, the 5th Anti-Tank Company, 24th Infantry Battalion, and the 152 Strike Squadron of F-4s. And then, obviously, to the, to the east, I have the 2nd Armored Regiment, the Close Recon Company, the 160. First Fighter Squadron and the First Logistics Company. I think Koi means company. Um, now, to the west, the North Koreans have the 33rd Infantry Battalion, 22nd Tank Battalion, 12th Artillery Company. So they'll they'll throw these units uh, against me in the west. They'll uh, attack first in the center with the 52nd Infantry Regiment, the 27th Fire Support Company, the 4th Anti-Tank com Company, the 8th Strike Squadron, and the 11th Artillery comp uh, Company. So they have, they are going to throw an entire regiment, several companies against me, against uh, my K-1 tanks, my battalion, my regiment, uh, my, my two battalions, infantry, uh, not infantry, heavy armored and engineers, and obviously two uh, to regiment, special forces and infantry. Now to the north or to the east, they'll send the 12th tank regiment in the 9th strike squadron, which is actually fairly dangerous, mainly because of these SU-25Ks, which have anti-tank uh, missiles on them. So anyway, uh, the goal for me here is to hold Busan. I can call in some support, I can deploy them. Uh, the way it works is uh, in airland battle, the game before this, you could you would deploy an entire division or regiment or whatever. Here we can deploy parts of a regiment, division, etc. So that's why w that's what the companies. The only one that is probably worth using, and that's the only one you should use if you have any problems, is to use the attack helicopter company, which has Cobra attack helicopters. Which obviously, since the North Koreans are going to deploy a lot of tanks against you and a lot of artillery, you should possibly use. They do have an anti-air company, they do have some attack uh, planes, including MI uh, MiG-29s. But to be fair, they are, uh, the North Koreans are overextended and much of their military is actually here on in the Seoul area on the border. 
what you're really dealing with here is the vanguard of their forces, which obviously I need to defeat. This will be easy, because the campaign is easy. And the idea is, like the first Korean War, that North Korea did overextend its forces. Now, keep in mind, this is all in a matter of days. So, I am going to deploy uh, my military forces. I don't care about Busan. That particular area does not matter. So, I'll deploy here. And I will make use of my K1 tanks, which are capable of easily decimating anything that the North Koreans are capable of throwing against me, as well as I think I'll deploy some uh, some laws here. No, actually, not like that. Instead, two each. Two each. All right. So, uh, the, the way it works is you need to hold these command zones to get points, so two points, four points, two points, all that. Uh, and you'll need to hold the the land corridors to get reinforcements, also to get, use planes. I don't need planes, I have the tanks. So that shouldn't be any issue. So these K1 tanks are going to do a great job uh, against the enemy, and I'll call in some Cobra, uh, some some attack helicopters, if it's necessary. Obviously, they do have some Shelkas, which aren't really good against planes, but against helicopters, they're quite devastating. Now here come their F5s, they have napalm, so they're anti-infantry, they're not gonna do a good job at all. Right, they're sending a man vehicle. Another K1 tank. Now the goal, the way you win battles, there are several ways of winning battles. You can destroy all of their command vehicles, or you can inflict enough casualties that they, that the enemy will uh, will lose all of their points. I prefer to d inflict casualties because that's a smarter decision. Since it ultimately means that the enemy will just have less troops for their future battles. So in this case, I'm inflicting serious casualties on their infantry. Alright, I think I did just accidentally destroyed their command vehicle. Either way, they did take some serious casualties there. I only lost, uh, I think, what, some um, APCs, more or less. And their infantry regiment has been more or less devastated. Now, I'm gonna send those F-16s over there again. I'll keep the tanks. Hmm. Send the special forces. No, I'm gonna send the F4s. And use the tanks that I have as is in this area in order to, to win to win the day. It shouldn't be any real issue uh, to hold over there. I 
I just need to hold out for a couple of days in order to get American support. Alright, let's have the tank battle. The K1s against the North Korean T-62. Their own version of the T-62 specifically. It's not that they just... Uh, uh, they're just using T-62s. No, those aren't just T-62s. They're more or less a North Korean upgraded version based uh, on the T-62. That's what they are using. I will have an F-16. Now, one of the actual issues that uh, South, Korea, South Korea and actually other U.S. allies had is that Congress, for a fairly significant period of the time, as well as presidential administrations, limited the weapon sales to various countries uh, around the wo world. So F-16s, for instance, weren't being sold to many countries or anyone really at all. For a fairly substantial period of time. Now, that is some casualties. Just keep in mind that they do have a fairly formidable tank force deployed around here. And they do have SU-25s and they're ready to smash my face in. Now I need to be careful. Because of that. Alright, bring in... Another plane. And gonna bring in another recon vehicle. I don't want to lose these K1s. They're all I have. <laughs> the thing, they're powerful, but they are very limited in terms of their numbers. Where are they? How much fuel does it still have? Alright. gonna speed this up until I find some of the enemy. I wanna be careful though. There we go. There it is. The tank deployment that I was ex expecting even. I have greater range than they do, just that doesn't mean I can just take down as many tanks as I want.
tanks destroyed. Bring in more planes. Well, if I des destroy these upgraded T-62s, I think that should be enough. Guess not. Ooh. Stop, 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 you bloody fool. Okay. With the peace bridge. Yeah, an F-16 peace offering. The hilarious some of these names. Either way, just that command vehicle alone should be enough. There we go. Victory. A total victory. How much how many tanks did I destroy there? Eighteen. Yep, eighteen. There are only left two of of these upgraded versions. Obviously they do have uh, the normal ones. They did lose five command vehicles, so they're down to one. And they did lose a SU-25K. So they've taken a severe beating as a result of that. Now they will be back. They will even bring reinforcements with uh, probably the artillery company. Uh, the problem is because they've lost so many tanks, they're kind of in a bad situation over there. Now that's just uh, the east. Now to fight the battle in the west. Which may end up being the more difficult one, actually. Though I suppose I can use the, the F4s to, s to do a substantial amount of damage to them. So I'm just gonna deploy a tank. You know, the problem, the biggest problem here actually is that I don't really have a great deal of command vehicles. Alright, just bring in the Mavericks, all of them. And the uh, M48s. The problem is they have limited range. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't think I necessarily need every single one of them. It will help though. The real issue, I don't have... Oh, I think they... Yeah, they do actually have Vampire. They kind of have a problem, though. Where is that damn plane? Bring some toes. They're deploying a substantial force of infantry against me. Yeah, 
Bring in the Air Force. Forget about substantial damage, I'm just annihilating them over here. But that's what happens when the enemy doesn't have any air support, and I do! I need vision. And that's what I need. I need vision to use these F4s properly. No recon. That's what happens. Well, my special forces were needed in the central area. Because they're gonna counterattack. And the special forces are one of the best units. I can always fall back to Busan. You can always fall back to Busan and hold the perimeter there with all of your units. All right. Getting some repairs done. I am just gonna bring more M48 Atom tanks. Upgraded ones. They did try, the South Koreans did think about, oh, maybe we should get M60 tanks. But then decided against it because by the time they were going to do that, they were already better tanks. Or consideration of better tanks already. More F4s. The plane that was utter failure. An utter failure because it was the what the Navy, I think, put their hopes in through Vietnam, and it ended up getting smashed in dogfights by, you know, MiG 21s and all that. By the North Vietnamese, who, by the way, were vastly outnumbered in most air engagements they fought in. Or vastly outnumbered during the war, in term at least on there, in there, this specifically here. I believe that uh, I can use a prop uh, description that uh, that one of the great um, air aces of World War II used uh, in, uh, in regards to the American uh, Air Force, specifically the bo air bombings of World War II, the freight train. That's what the American Air Force is. It's the freight train, the unstoppable freight train. You can damage it though. You do quite a bit of damage to that freight train. I didn't even realize that I didn't have those deployed. Hello. Okay, uh... Let's get some of the crap here, tanks. This is a waste of time, isn't it? I don't care if it's a draw, considering the fact that I just spent most of this decimating much of their... ...armed, uh, ...armed forces, but I would obviously prefer... There we go. Done.
I have destroyed an entire infantry battalion over there. Makes me feel good. Really good. I mean, the 53rd Infantry Battalion is annihilated. They still have the 21st Tank Battalion, but even that has taken su substantial damage. Huh, only apparently destroyed one command vehicle. Alright. Same idea as before, in terms of how to wipe them out. They've sent that uh, 11th artillery uh, company over there to help their tank regiment, their badly mangled tank regiment, I might add. I really do need to destroy these forces here, though, because they're sending in those uh, that aviation regiment. Which, that aviation regiment, although it's not really that uh, powerful, uh, the issue with it is... They do have uh, some MI-24s that can be damaged. They do have air assault units. So that can and might end up being a real problem. Either way, I am just going to deploy my command vehicles as before. More or less the same deployment as before. Though obviously this time around, I do have veteran tanks. I mean, hmm, let's see, that should do just fine, that will do, I mean, I don't need too much here, do I? Okay, no, I don't. All right, these two K1s will hold position over there. How do I group? Uh, fire position, display formation, move fast. Does it seem like there is a way? Either way, doesn't matter.
All right, so the American fleet has arrived. Excellent. Reinforcements. Bloody, about bloody time as well with that. Okay, so what to do then? That is an excellent question. In, in terms of movement of troops and all that kind of stuff. All that jazz. I mean, they do only have one tank uh, unit here. They might bring in some air units though. Could be useful, could not, might not be useful. Um, I'll deploy the F-16s there, the F-86 Sabres, the F-4s. This is gonna be my uh, unit deployment, all right. And, and the reason I'm deploying the F-4s there is in order to deal with their, uh, their attack helicopters, which they will use. I mean, obviously they're not gonna be the most useful of units in, in this situation, but still. Kinda useful. So I'm deploying two units over there. The rest will be tanks and planes, probably. Okay, they've... They've taken some damage over there. Uh, they retreated. Huh. All right.
대기 중입니다. 저 말입니까? 제가 할 일이라도 이끌던지 따르던지 아니면 내기랩쇼 비켜! 지시사항 있습니까? 이끌던지 따르던지 아니면 내길에서 따르던지. 비켜! 아니면 내길에서 비켜! 제가 할 일이라도 박살내버리자고 저 말입니까? 어, 공격받고 있습니다! 기동 중입니다 이끌던지 따르던지 아니면 내길에서 비켜! 제가 할 일이라도 잠입 중 이동 준비 완료 대기 중입니다 기동 중입니다 우리가 필요한 곳이 어딥니까? 드디어 제법 강한 놈들입니까? 아니 또 벌어진 세상 있습니까? 해당 위치로 찾기 중 Okay, Busan is uh, safe. I've destroyed their tank regiment, their tank units uh, in general. The only choice I have to make is whether or not I keep the special aviation regiment here or I move it uh, south. If I move it, then I lose obviously quite a lot here. I could also deploy more units, but anyway, I'm, I'm personally out of time. So, uh, Costine here on Serious Gaming signing out. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more.